All right, so I've told you guys multiple times that if you had any questions or anything you wanted to see a video about, to drop that shit in the comments. And this was requested multiple times, so here we fucking go! Today we are going to be talking about prison weapons. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, man, like I am in recovery, I'm a recovery coach, I work, I pay taxes, I'm like a full-blown citizen now, but I'm still a sneaky little fucker. So, what I'm doing is I'm starting with the least lethal to the most lethal to encourage you guys to stay for the whole video. See what I did there? That's like borderline fraud. What the fuck? And this shit is going to vary from prison to prison and state to state, whether it's state or federal, it's going to go a whole spectrum, right? Like in Oregon, if you get caught with a shank, it is a big fucking deal. You're going to get outside charges. You're going to get another five years added to your shit. They do not fucking play about that shit. But I've got a lot of homeboys who've done time here in Florida, and there's certain joints that you roll up to here where the first thing they ask you is, do you have a fucking shank? Because you're going to fucking need one. And regardless of the policies of administration, if you don't have hands and you are on a level four or a fucking max yard, you will probably need to have something to defend yourself with. It's just in your best interest. I had a homeboy who was cool as fuck, but he knew he couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag, and he always said that he would rather catch another five than catch one to the fucking neck and die in prison. So another really important aspect to this shit is where do you hide it, and really the only safe place to hide things like this is inside yourself. And look, I did boxing for years, I'm a big dude, I kinda got hands, and I know everybody at every institution that I go to, so it wasn't that serious for me, and I was not about to put a fucking sharp object up my fucking ass, it's just not gonna happen. But I do know dudes who had shit up the trunk and they would pop that shit on you if you fucked around. So anyways, least to most deadly, here is our prison weapon video. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is blunt force objects. Look, I'm not saying that blunt force objects are not dangerous, that you can't kill people with them, because you absolutely fucking can. You can cave somebody's fucking skull in, you can give them permanent brain damage, you can kill a motherfucker if you hit them hard enough with a blunt force object, but it's not going to compare, at least in my book, to cutting a fucking artery or hitting a vital organ, ever. So one basic and really rudimentary weapon that you can use in prison is a fist pack, right? It's an easy-ass concept. Your fist, it's not as fucking solid. There's not as much weight. There's not as much impact. You put something in there to fucking tighten that up, and you can get a better punch. I saw a lot of dudes that would use a bar of soap. They would wear it down. They would get it so it was nice and solid, and it would give it a little bit more of a pack when you punch someone in their shit. Then you have the classic fucking lock in a sock, which is basically emulating like the old school medieval mace. We've all seen those, like the chain with the fucking ball at the end of it. This shit can literally fuck you up. And most people make the mistake of using a sock with it. What's way better is a pillowcase, and let me explain why. Socks have elastic in them. Elastic is going to stretch. That stretch is going to decrease your accuracy when you're going towards target. Also, and I saw this shit happen first first hand on a fucking landing on D block at OSP. This dude was coming at another dude with a lock and a sock and a long sock. He swung, the dude put his head back, put his arm up, it swung around and hit the dude right in the face that was holding the lock and a sock. He went down and he got his whole fucking shit caved in. Dude was stomping him over and over and over again. Everybody had to back up cause blood was fucking spurting. It was a fucking massacre all because he used a sock there was elastic, his accuracy was off, and it came right back and got his own ass in the fucking temple, domed him straight to the floor. So like I said, the pillowcase, way more accurate because it doesn't have that fucking elastic, way more solid, you're gonna hit on target, plus pillowcases are usually less likely to rip and let the fucking lock go flying, leaving you unarmed. Now at this point in the fucking game, most joints don't have fucking softball anymore, and if they do, the bat is usually chained to the fucking base, so you're not going to be able to use it as a fucking weapon but back in the day at snake river they had softball teams and they had a bat that they would give inmates to be able to use during the softball games and one dude in particular got busted right in the fucking head cracked his whole fucking skull open in the back and they just sat him up against a fucking pole and left him there they didn't find this motherfucker dead there until they were clearing the fucking yard and they noticed that this dude was not moving back to the fucking yard movement 
Another blunt force object that could be used for a weapon really easily but got taken away because inmates abused it and used it as a weapon is fucking free weights. And that was a huge fucking L for people in prison. If you're taking the free weights and smashing a motherfucker's skull in, you're taking everybody else's opportunity to fucking work out and enjoy those fucking weights when you could have just used your hands or a fucking shank or a fucking lock in a sock. And you're kind of a bitch for that, bro. On God, to be honest. Fuck you. This next one is not portable at all what so fucking ever so it takes some really slick alignment and you have to get the person while they're in their cell but one time I pulled this off and it was pretty fucking epic they put a fucking pedophile in my neighbor's cell he was a small dude he wasn't clicked up he wasn't about much but he sure as fuck didn't want to live with a pedophile this dude was paying another gang and he told my fucking neighbor he was not gonna fucking PC up he was not gonna leave he was not gonna roll the fuck out so I went in there during the next fucking line move Movement. I knocked this dude in the fucking face three or four times, put him down on the ground, and I was able to slam his fucking head with the cell door three or four times. I felt some shit crack. He was all the way fucked up, and we dragged him down the fucking tier and left him halfway down the tier away from our fucking cells. They put my neighbor in the hole under investigation for 14 days. He never said a fucking word, didn't tell on nobody. Came out 14 days later, and they put him on the same block, and we got to fucking chill. He wrote out solid as fuck, and I fucking love you if you're out there roach you did good buddy now shanks come in all forms and all fucking sizes you can use any type of fucking debris to make yourself a motherfucking shank man and prisoners are fucking inventive one of the most commonly used types of shanks is also the least effective because people might not have access to things that they can make shanks on really quickly but a lot of people will pop the blade out of their fucking razor and they will attach it to a fucking toothbrush this can give you a good fucking slicer that'll open someone up but it's not gonna do that much man slicing somebody yeah it sucks it'll open you up you'll bleed if you get them in an artery just right you might do some real damage but compared to stabbing somebody and getting them in a fucking internal organ or getting them in the fucking throat or getting them up in the armpit it's just not a real option like it'll do damage it's better than nothing but it's a very ineffective weapon if you have chain link fence you can break off a piece of that fucking chain link you got yourself a good fucking stabber there buddy just put a handle on that bitch and fucking go to town stick them over and over again you'll see this happen a lot in movies in real life this is a perfectly valid prison weapon it gets fucking action i have seen shanks and shivs come in all fucking different sizes from like something small as fuck all the way up to shit that looked like a fucking lawnmower blade if you've never seen somebody in prison pull out something the size of a lawnmower blade out of their fucking pants and run after somebody with it you're probably not at a real fucking prison to be honest i've seen shanks and shivs made out of broken cds out of pieces of fence pieces of plexiglass fucking pretty much anything that you can fucking think of man i know that there is a method and i've been told about it i've never seen it and i didn't really listen too much i don't understand the concept but you can melt down a fucking soda bottle and pull it as you fucking melt it and you can make something that will penetrate a human being out of it i told y'all that i was going from fucking least deadly to most deadly and i'm gonna get into what the fuck i meant right now biological weapons are by far the scariest shit to me like i don't want to fuck with it this is not only gross it fucking terrifies me maybe it's just me maybe you would rather have this happen to you than getting stabbed or getting hit in the fucking face with something hard but for me this is the worst i, I no uh, uh hard fucking pass bro when i was at osp there was a little dude that we fucked with he was the fucking homie he was cool as shit he was soft as fuck though and he was pale white like that motherfucker powder like this dude was was all the way fucking sheet white so we called him cotton because he was soft and white he ended up racking up like 37 or 38 dollars worth of debt with some dudes over some fucking weed fucking weed bro weed and these dudes went and got a fucking syringe and paid a dude with aids full-blown aids to fill the syringe with his blood and they were coming after him with it he was fucking terrified he was scared to fucking death he came to me and asked me for fucking help so i went out to the fucking yard i approached these guys and I said, hey man, look, I will pay that fucking dude's debt, but do not ever fucking threaten that dude with anything again. Do not sell him anything. Do not go fucking near him. I will pay his debt, but if you have a fucking problem with him or anyone else that I fucking run with, you fucking come to me or I'm coming after you, period. That's what's up. Don't be doing this AIDS needle shit. That shit is fucking weird as fuck. Y'all are fucking lame for that. 
Another one is gassing, and this is fucking disgusting. This is usually used in the hole, but I've seen it happen on mainline too, where people will piss and shit in a cup, stir that shit up, let it fucking ferment, let it get all fucking disgusting and fucking nasty, and then they'll splash somebody in the fucking face with it. But check this out. There's also fiberglass in there, and people will shave off pieces of fiberglass, break it into tiny little splinters, mix that shit up in the fermented piss and shit, so that when they throw it at the person instantly the person's going to want to wipe that shit off of themselves but when they wipe it that fiberglass breaks the skin and exposes their bloodstream to whatever the fuck is in that piss and shit it is a biological weapon hands down i don't give a fuck that's the scariest fucking thing to me i don't want to get a fucking bloodborne infection that's disgusting piss and shit bro do better gross and that you live with that you have to live you keep that in your fucking cell Piss and shit for days until it gets fucking worse and worse. How the fuck are you going to sit in the cell and smell that? I never hated a motherfucker that much, bro. I would much rather just stab a motherfucker and call it good. I will not sit in my own fucking tiny ass fucking cell smelling my own piss and shit day on end to get back in a motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what he did. Y'all are tripping. Now, I'm not entirely certain that this really happened. This could just be fucking folklore passed down amongst fucking generation of inmate from OSP. But it was said that back in the day, a dude that worked in industries was able to siphon gas off of one of the trucks that used to come and pick up the furniture that they would make in the fucking shop there that they would take out into the real world and sell. Because, of course, OSP, slave labor, industries, all that shit, right? But dude got gasoline because dude on fucking D-Block owed him fucking money, right? And he went up to the fucking dude's cell while dude was standing at the bars, splashed him, tossed a fucking match in, and lit his motherfucking ass on fire in the fucking cell. I was told from a few people who had been there a long time that it had actually happened, and that D-Block smelled like fucking burning flesh and hair for fucking months after that. So that's a quick rundown of weapons in prison. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you have anything that you want to hear about, man, hit me in the fucking comments. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you have any questions. I try to get back to you all as soon as I can. I I work a lot, but I promise you, I care. I want to fucking hear from you, and I'll talk to you next time. Oh, yeah.